Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I will have two clarifications to seek from uh, Mr. Mutuse, but because my, my leader, Senator Governor James Orengo, opened this session with a verse from the Bible, I will also read one from the Bible. The book of Exodus, chapter 23, verse 1. You shall not spread a false report. You shall not join hands with a wicked man to be a malicious witness. That is the Bible. The Mutus I want to know from is Mutus 1. Is this impeachment motion really and truly your motion? I ask that question to the speaker because on all accounts, the witness is unable to prove anything. Is this your motion, or are you called to just sign a motion than to come and defend it here? Secondly, in the oath of office for the deputy president, it is required of him to diligently serve the people of the Republic of Kenya in the office of the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. The people that reside in the mountain, the Mount Kenya region, are Kenyans. What is so wrong with a deputy president, a state officer, in defending people from a region in this country and then coming to defend other people in Nairobi and other people in other regions? What is so wrong? What is impeachable about that defense? I thank the speaker. Senator Veronica. Honorable Mutuse, just to clarify a few issues. One, are there any charges for money laundering that have been uh, preferred against the Deputy President? That's one. And then to confirm whether um, the Asset Recovery Agency, the case of the Asset Recovery Agency that was before uh, Justice Esther Minor was fully resolved using the consent order. Those two clarifications. Senator Olekina. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I, I need to seek two clarifications. And one of them is from the counsel of the Deputy President. This is in regards to the, alle the allegation on ground four in terms of <clears throat> the consent that was reached upon for the 200 million. I heard that there was a consent after the deputy president filed an appeal of the case which I believe the judgment still stand. Do we have that consent? And in what circumstances led to that consent being um, agreed upon and the money returned, the 200 million shillings returned to the Deputy President, yet the High Court had already determined that that money were proceeds of corruption. Was it threats? Number two, I'd like to seek some clarification on the concept of shareholding. Is a coalition agreement a company? Is Kenya government a company? Because I was still not very clear about those two issues. Because we've been invited to interpret the coalition agreement of Kenya Kwanzaa. Yet, every time, based on the evidence presented, all I could hear is the deputy president talking about people. So are people now part of the coalition agreement? And is the coalition agreement a company or is it a coalition agreement registered with the registrar of political parties? Senator Meth. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. I also want to uh, get to understand from a clarification from Honorable Mutuse. 
on uh, the assertion that you made on ground number um, well, on this accusation that you say that His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa acquired a dairy farm in Nyandarwa County, whether there is any evidence in record that he has a dairy farm in Nyandarwa, either the title number of the, of the land or even the, you know, a, a photograph. I've seen you uh, put photograph of uh, hotels, either a photograph of cows or whatever you'd have in record. Number two, I would also want to know from the Honorable Mwengi Mutuse, on this matter that you say the people of Kenya feel that uh, they have been left out, whether there is any evidence in record of people who have complained to the National Cohesion and Integration Commission complaining against the conduct of the Deputy President in as far as uh, the issues that you've raised. Finally, there is uh, one um, uh, property of the estate of Dirito Kashagwa that uh, is referred to as Kuruitu, and I think you have adduced uh, the list of uh, the, the directors in your submissions. You said that the only one person who is an executor and is a, a, a beneficiary would be Deputy President Rigadi Kashagwa. In that will, did you see that part of the, uh, the people who are beneficiaries are the executors? So uh, one of the three or all the three executors are also beneficiaries. And in the regards to what you have adduced in the Kruitu uh, uh, property, it is actually one of, the uh, one of the executors, not the deputy president, who actually bought that particular property. Senator Crystal Asiga. Thank you so much, Speaker. I'm very, very glad that um, the Bible has been cited because I have a couple of verses of my own I would like to also start my contribution with. I take it to Proverbs 17, which I just read yesterday, in fact, Speaker, which say in 14 and 15, 14 says, starting a quarrel is like breaching a dam, so drop the matter before a dispute breaks out. 15, acquitting the guilty and condemning the innocent, the Lord detests them both. And I'd like to maybe insert, instead of the Lord, I would like to insert the Senate, detest them both, and we have a very upward hill task. My question goes to the witness. In his motion, um, he has use the Oxford Advanced Dictionary to define gross misconduct. I was just curious to find out why the Oxford Dictionary and not maybe uh, a relevant Kenyan law that defines if he has one, or perhaps Black's Law Dictionary, which I know um, all legal counsels also um, rely upon. Thank you. Senator Gataya, more fire. Yeah, thank you very much. Speaker, I, I want to seek clarification from the council for